So this video doesn't cover anything specific to React. We're talking about ES2015 modules, import and export statements, which we need to use in order to work with Create React App. So if you're familiar with that, if you're comfortable with these imports up here, what this means versus this, what export default means versus uh, a non-default export, all of that stuff, then skip this video. The only reason I'm covering it is because we're gonna use import and export all over the place with Create React App. Okay, uh, so if you're not familiar with it, welcome, hi. What we're talking about here is a way of sharing code, functions, objects, classes between JavaScript files. And you might be familiar with require, which is another way of doing basically the same thing, uh, but the syntax we're going to use and the one that uh, Create React App is using is through modules, ES 2015 modules. It's basically a newer sort of fancier way of, of doing require. So as I've already mentioned, it's used all over the place in our Create React app, just the basic skeleton. I didn't change anything here, but if we look at index.js, we're importing things. There's a couple of things I should highlight. We're importing from a, a string like React, but also from a string like dot slash app. And there's a significant difference. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, we'll also talk about the difference between export versus export default. So what I have over here is another create react app that I have deleted the source, well, all the contents of the source folder. So this directory is empty, but I have the skeleton here. I have the server running. Um, I have over here, the browser running to localhost 3000. And right now it's freaking out because there's no index.js file. So let's start by making an index.js just like this. Okay, nope, it needs to be index.js. And let's make a second file called helpers.js. So these will be the folders that we are basically sharing code between. So let's say in my helpers.js folder, I have a simple function called uh, helpful, <laughs> sure. Okay, so function helpful is just going to console.log. I did a super helpful thing, okay? And we wanna use it inside of index. So of course, imagine helpful is actually doing something helpful in a helpers file, maybe sorting data, maybe removing something, make, making an API request uh, in a more realistic situation. So if I wanna use that function, I can't just call helpful, right? I don't have access to it. And if I try to take a look in the browser, it says on line one, helpful is not defined. You can't do that. So there are two steps I need to take. One is I need to export the helpful function out of this file and I need to import it over here where I wanna use it. So let's start by exporting it. And we're gonna begin with export default helpful. We'll talk about the default in a moment. And we wanna make sure we're not doing this. This is going to call the function, this will export it. So this says when this file, the whole file is required, the default thing that we should send out, that we should export, the, the, little, the lone survivor that makes it out of this burning ship is helpful, which is this function. So over here, I can import it. And I'm going to say imports and some name. This doesn't actually matter as far as making it work. It's just, we wanna have a, a good name, but let's just say helpful from, and then this is also important. We can't just say helpers like this. If I do, you'll see what happens. If I just do helpers, it's going to tell me eventually module not found, can't find the module helpers. So instead of helpers, we need to do dot slash helpers. And this is a, a very important distinction. Helpers on its own, it will be looking in the node modules folder, looking for a folder called helpers. Dot slash helpers is going to look in the current folder, same one as index.js, which happens to be the source folder. It's looking for this file. So anytime, almost anytime, we're importing um, JavaScript files inside of our own Create React app, inside a file in the source directory, we'll be doing dot slash helpers. And we don't have to specify dot JS. Okay, now it should be working fine and we get, I did a super helpful thing. Now compare this over here to when we import React or React DOM, those don't have the dot slash and that's because they are modules that we are importing. So these are modules in this folder. We did not write them. We will be doing this all the time at the top of our files. Also, when we install a new package like uh, Axios to help us make requests, for example, we will import from Axios, not dot slash Axios. Okay, so now we have access to this function, but to be clear, this can be called anything. We can call it H 
It just means that when we call the function, we need to refer to it as h. This is like a container for whatever is exported out of helpers. In our case, we export one thing, helpful. OK, so just to prove that, it still works fine. Now that works, but often there's not just one thing we want to export. So let's say we have another function or a couple. I'll just fill them in quickly. So we have two new functions, sort and sing. So if I want to use them over an in index.js, right now they're not being exported at all. And the only thing that's being exported is helpful with this default keyword. Now what default signifies is that when you import the entire file, the default thing to be exported is helpful. But if we want other things to be exported, we can also do export, and I'm just going to get rid of that for a moment. And then in curly braces, we pick what we'd like to export. So let's do all of them, sort and sing. OK, now over here, I no longer can just import one thing like this using this syntax. So I can't say import h from dot slash helpers. If we try and call h, we're not going to have a good time. Attempted import error dot slash helpers does not contain a default export. So it tried, it said, give me the default thing from helpers. Well, there is nothing. So what we do instead is import the pieces we want with the same curly brace syntax. So we could say, let's say I only want helpful. Then I would call helpful here. And this time the name does matter. We're trying to match the name helpful with helpful. If I just do H again, it's not going to work. It's not going to be able to find it. If I try it, we get an error. H is not exported, but helpful is. So let's keep it at helpful. And let's say I want something else like sort. I just ask for that and I can call sort on my own just to prove it. There we go. Both have been called. So if I also want that third one, if I want what we call it sing, I just do the same thing here. Now the order doesn't matter because we're going based off of the name. So helpful sort and sing, we'll call this sing again. And now we have all three of them. Okay, so that's the syntax for importing things when they are not exported by default. We're selectively picking the things we want. What about if we still want a default export from here? So we can add this back in. Let's say by default, by default, whatever the terminology is or the pronunciation on that, the emphasis, uh, we're going to export helpful, but also will allow you to use sort and sing, but you have to manually ask for them. So the syntax here, if we look at it now and try and use this, we still have a problem. Attempted import error, helpful is not exported from helpers. The syntax instead looks like this. Import helpful, comma, the other things that we're looking for that aren't default exports from helpers. So import something, so whatever the default is, which in our case is helpful, and import sort and sing, which are not default exports. Now we have access to all of them, and it still works. So what you'll see a lot in Create React App looks like this, import React, comma, component from React. This is at the top of a ton of our components. Well, every component we write, for the, pretty much everyone. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. Uh, we're going to write this. So this is importing the default from React. And we're also importing components. So we have this variable component we can use. OK, and I'll get rid of that. Uh, last thing, I never made this clear. But if we don't actually export sort and sing, and we try and import them over here, we're going to have a bad time. So it's you know a two-way thing. You have to explicitly export, and you have to import what you want. So we need both of those there. Now, let's talk about when you should use default, export default, or if you ever should. So basically, the rule of thumb is that you use a default export when there is an obvious candidate, a most likely thing to export out of that file. So in the case of React, as we've already seen, we import React from React, it makes sense that we, there's one thing, right? There's this React thing that we're exporting out. Same uh, when we're writing our components. If we look at this app.js component, it exports the app component that we created by default. So that makes sense. If you're requiring this file, there's, there's one thing you want. You want that app component. When we make other components, a nav component, a to-do item component, a form component, we want to be able to import that component with this nice syntax. So I could say import form 
form from dot slash form. And that should be the one thing that's exported. But oftentimes it's not clear that there's one thing that should be the default. So you don't have to do it. You actually never have to make a default export, but it can be nice just to sort of tell users to indicate to other developers what the most important thing is in that entire file. Okay, so that's a rough intro to ES2015 modules. We use import and exports all the time. Every component we create at the top will be importing a couple things like React and component, as I already showed you, and we'll be exporting the actual component at the end so we can import it somewhere else. Also, just remember, uh, there's a difference between doing this, importing from dot slash helpers, and then importing from a string that doesn't have dot slash, like this. As I've already shown you, if we import React from React, it will be looking for a module in here called React. If we do dot slash, it will be looking for a file in the same folder, index, or in the same folder as index, which is source. It will look for a React.js file. So very different. Okay, moving on.